In this video, we're going to be looking at the lower cost of market rule, and this is covered in topic three. For our demonstration problem, we're going to be using exercise 9-5. In this problem, we have a company that has five different products in their inventory, and we are presented with per unit information for the cost, the replacement cost, and the selling price. GAAP requires that inventory be maintained at the historical cost unless there are changes in the market that would cause the cost to be greater than the market. If that is the case, we must determine the market price. In order to determine the market price, we need to gather some information together. One of the pieces of information we need is the replacement cost. The replacement cost is what it would take to replace one unit of inventory, either through purchasing or manufacturing it. However, GAAP does not look at just the replacement cost. Instead, we're also going to consider two other amounts, the normal uh, or the net realizable value and the net realizable value minus the normal selling price. So we're presented with the replacement cost information. That is something a company group would do by going out and estimating or shopping around and finding out the cost of the merchandise. In order for us to establish the, norm, uh, the net realizable value, uh, we're going to need to know what we could sell the product for. Many times in these problems, the jump off point is the normal selling price. The problem also tells us that if we were to sell off these products today, we would incur some additional disposal costs. These can vary uh, by the nature of the business and problem to problem, so make sure you read these carefully. In this case, we have to pay a sales commission that is equal to 10% of the selling price and shipping costs, which are equal to 5% of the historical cost. Inventory information can be given like this, where we're given the per unit basis of each item, or it can be given in total, as it was with the first in-class assignment. Sometimes in a problem, they'll ask you for the uh, balance sheet amount for inventory based on lower cost of market. If you are presented with per unit amounts, they must tell you the number of units for each of our product lines so you can determine the balance sheet value of inventory. Uh, and or if the problem asks for the amount of loss that would be recognized by the application of the lower cost of market and you're given unit prices, again, you would have to be given the number of units in inventory for each product. You would then take the lower cost of market value for each unit and multiply it by the number of units in inventory to come up with the inventory balance at lower cost of market. So let's look at our worksheet for the lower cost of market. We're going to begin by determining the normal profit. This is uh, given to us in the problem that it's 30% of the selling price. So we're going to enter a formula that determines our normal selling price for product A. We can then copy and paste that for our other products. We're going to use this a little bit later on. But right now, let's turn our attention to the net realizable value. The net realizable value is going to be what we get if we were to sell the product. So in this case, we're going to begin with the selling price. And the first course we're going to have is a commission cost of 10%. So we're uh, setting up a complex formula. It's going to have two sets of calculations. First, the 
uh, disposal costs related to the selling and then from the shipping. For the shipping, this is going to be 5% of cost. So the commission uses the selling price, the shipping uses the cost. This formula will add the two costs up together for a total of eight dollars. Our net realizable value is going to be equal to our selling price minus the disposal price. And again, once we get this set for one product, we can quickly copy and paste these. So now we have our net realizable value. Next, we're going to determine our third factor, and that is the net realizable value minus the normal profit. So we will just go up and reference the values we just calculated for the NRV, the net realizable value. We had earlier determine the normal profit. And our NRV minus our normal profit, that will give us our three comparison points, the net realizable value, the replacement cost, and the net realizable value minus the normal profit. All right, so our product A, we're going to compare the net realizable value of $52, the replacement cost of 35 and the net realizable value of 34 And we're going to choose the middle amount. In this case, the highest amount is the net realizable value. The lowest is the NRV minus the normal profit, which means the middle amount is going to be our replacement cost. And typically, this is what we would expect. But let's now complete our analysis. And what I'm doing is taking our cell references from product A and copying them over. And now we have to individually look at our analysis to determine the middle amount. Again, for product B, it's going to be the replacement cost. It will be the uh, replacement cost for product C. However, for product D, net realizable value is high, replacement cost low, and our middle is our net realizable value minus normal. For product E, our middle is going to be our net realizable value. Replacement cost is the high, NRV minus normal profit below. Our final step is to compare our cost to our market, in the middle of our three values. And we're going to choose the lower of the two. So for product A, it's the LCM, the lower cost of market, as is the case for product B. For product C, however, cost remains the lowest. For product D, it's our lower cost of market. And for product E, it's our historical cost.